What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Cam, ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. Shout out to everybody watching this video right now. Drop a like down below because I already know you're going to love it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you comment anything down in the comment section for your chance to win $50 this week like we do every single week on this channel. Thank you guys for joining me as always. As you know, in the beginning of the week, we did the first look lineup build. We built a lineup together. In this video, it'll be our final look full slate breakdown. I will go through a lot more players than I did in the first look because in the first look, I just talk about the guys that I'm putting in the lineups. In this one, we're going to talk about many more players, okay? We're going to go position by position and talk about all the guys that we're interested in, or that I'm interested in for this slate, all right? I'm not going to keep you too long. GreenlightDFS.com, man. Make sure you join the squad as soon as possible so you get the college football slates on top of the NFL slates all the way up through Monday, all right? Let's go ahead and get straight into this. Starting off at quarterback, one of the quarterbacks I really, really love this week that I'm hoping goes under the radar is Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's going against an Arizona secondary without Patrick Peterson that has been giving up points to the quarterback position, okay? They gave up over 30 to Matthew Stafford week one, over 33 to Lamar Jackson week two, all right? And then gave up week three, over 25 to Kyle Allen, okay? Allen made his first start and still got over 25, Russell Wilson has been playing very well this year with 16, 28, and 44 DraftKings points, respectively. Last week, he went absolutely crazy, throwing for 406 yards, ran for two touchdowns, and threw for two touchdowns. Um, this is an amazing matchup here against a fast-paced Arizona team that runs more plays than any other team in the league. They move very, very fast in this offense, so that will force Seattle to speed it up and do more plays as well. Russell Wilson is an amazing option, and I love him at 6-1. Another guy that I love, I put him in the first look lineup, is Daniel Jones. By the way, if you're your first time uh, coming to the final look videos for the channel, uh, make sure you subscribe down below. I don't go in any particular order. I talk about the guys I like that pop through my head that I have written down that I am very interested in this week and guys that I think could have very good weekends, whether in cash or GPP, it doesn't matter. I'm going to talk about all of them and I'm just going to go through the guys I like. No particular order. Now, Daniel Jones made his first career start last week. Um, looked absolutely amazing, throwing for 336 yards, rushing for two, throwing for two, put on his Russell Wilson impression. Um, and this one didn't throw for as many yards, but he put on a good impression. 39 DraftKings points again at Tampa Bay. He's back home in New York where you know damn well he's going to get a ton of love because these New York fans have been begging for Eli to get out of there and have a new quarterback come in for the longest. They've wanted Daniel Jones since the beginning. They finally have him. Now he's going against a Washington secondary that has been atrocious, giving up over 28 DraftKings points week one and week two each. And then over 20 to Trubisky week three. And Trubisky had been having a horrible season until he ran into Washington and it corrected him and he ended up having a solid game. All right, so Daniel Jones, obviously, is probably going to be the chalkiest quarterback on the slate. I do like Russell Wilson if you have the ability to spend up there to only 6-1. I, I think he's got the 40-point potential. He could go absolutely nuts once again. But Daniel Jones in cash is an amazing option at 5-3. Another guy that I'm very interested in is Case Keenum on the other side of that game. The Giants secondary has been horrible, kind of like Arizona's. They've been garbage, okay? Gave up over 36 to Prescott week one, over 22 to Allen week two, and then almost 30 to Winston week three. Case Keenum had a toughish matchup against Chicago, still dropped 19, got hit on every damn drop back, and he still managed to throw over 330 yards for two touchdowns um, in a tough matchup against Chicago. This one's going to be much easier. I think a lot of people might sleep on him because he, he actually looked like he had a much worse game because of the picks he threw. He actually appeared to have a much worse game than he actually did. Okay, And against Chicago, for him to get 19, that's awesome. Now to go against the Giants squad. And obviously this is if, as long as they don't put Haskins in, um, their rookie quarterback that they have for Washington. They're just waiting for Keenum to do have a horrible day, and they're going to throw that rookie in there. But I don't think it's time yet. I think they're still going to go with Keenum. I'm not really worried about that. But yeah, going against this Giants team, I like the savings of Keenan, uh, Keenum at only 
Um, I mean, it saves you $400 off of Daniel Jones. So Keenum's also a, a solid cash quarterback as well. All right. Another guy. We're going to go back up here. All right. Let's talk about Phillip Rivers against Miami. I do think Phillip Rivers is a solid option. I do think Miami is going to be able to score at home on the Chargers defense. I think the Chargers defense is a decent defense, obviously, because they could shut them out. Who knows? But at home in Miami, I think Miami could possibly do some things here and actually keep this game closer than we might think. You know what I mean? We might think it could be an absolute crazy blowout. But I think Miami might possibly be able to keep this one close-ish at home in Miami. Um, and this Miami secondary has been giving it up. I mean, over 23 DraftKings points week one, week two, and week three. Actually, almost 40 to Lamar Jackson week one. Phillip Rivers is in a fantastic spot. And in GPP, I like the idea of pairing up Phillip Rivers with Keenan Allen. Nobody's going to go much of Phillip Rivers this week. And it's a solid GPP option, um, as, as, especially if that game stays close. But either way, Keenan Allen, Eckler, those guys are in play. This is probably going to be Eckler's last time getting all of this super run here because Melvin Gordon actually came back to the team and he should be active next week. All right. Now, another guy I want to talk about. I know I'm bouncing around, but we're going to talk about as many people as we can. Kyle Allen. Um, as long as he plays well while Cam's out, I don't know if they're going to put Cam back in when he comes back from this injury. This injury, could he could be missing a good amount of time with this foot injury. Um, we knew something was up with him. He wasn't scrambling, moving around on that, uh, was it Monday night game? He wasn't doing much moving at all. He was little. He was literally pocket cam, and that's not the type of cam we want. Um, but Kyle Allen came in and had a great game against Arizona, got 24, 25 DraftKings points. This matchup isn't Arizona. It's at Houston, which is a tougher matchup. But this is still a Houston team that gave up over 24 to Brees. That's still not that bad against Drew Brees. Over 23 to Phillip Rivers. That's not that bad. But Minshew, the rookie quarterback for Jacksonville, got over 17. I think Kyle Allen's in line for about, I'd say about the same as Minshew, about 17, 18 DraftKings points if I had to guess. He's a decent GPP option because nobody will be on him. Solid pivot off of, uh, he's an okay pivot off of Daniel Jones if you want to be a little different because so many people are going to be going Daniel Jones right around that same price range. Kyle Allen is okay. I love Daniel Jones much more though, but if you're trying to get sneaky in GPPs, the main guy I'm probably going to lean towards in GPPs, if you're trying to be a little sneakier, is Matthew Stafford. Uh, he, I feel like he's a little bit slept on this week with the guys like Russell Wilson, Daniel Jones, Case Keenum, Phillip Rivers, those type of dudes up at the top of the list of guys that we're interested in this week. I think that Stafford could go, uh, like I said, slept on. I mean, this dude throws a ton of passes every game because they don't have much of a running game that they uh, believe in. All right, uh, the dude slings the ball around a ton. Casey has actually not done too bad versus quarterbacks, but you got to understand, I mean, he hasn't faced much. He, they did okay against Lamar Jackson week three, over 20 DraftKings points. Lamar has been playing amazing, so that's pretty awesome. But Matthew Stafford is at home in the Dome going against KC, who should get a big lead against Detroit. He's going to have to air it out a ton. Matthew Stafford's an awesome GPP play. Love pairing him up with Galladay and Marvin Jones, or even just with Marvin Jones and Hawkinson. Maybe get off of uh, the popular, most likely popular Galladay and go like Marvin Jones and Hawkinson paired up with Matthew Stafford and GPPs. That's a decent option. Another guy that I want to talk about that's in a solid option, I mean a solid position here, is Jared Goff against Tampa Bay. Jared Goff has been playing very solid this year. He started off the season a little slow with a 10. Outside of that, he's almost got 20 in the last two games. Not amazing, uh, we know, but we know he's capable of some decent games. I mean, he dropped 40 against KC Week 11 last year, 33 a few weekends before that last year against New Orleans Week 9. This matchup against Tampa Bay is against the Tampa Bay secondary that almost gave up 40 to Daniel Jones making his first career NFL start. Okay, so Jared Goff could be a sneaky guy to really do some big things. The only question here is Tampa Bay going to be able to score well enough against this Rams uh, defense to make Jared Goff have to do too much work. All right, and that's the main thing that we got to watch there. So I'm not super interested in him, but it is a little bit sneaky seeing Daniel Jones dropped over 39. Goff could have a big game here. All right. Um, outside of that, let's see, anybody else that I'm interested in getting some exposure to? I think that Marcus Mariota 
is going to have very minimal ownership. He's going against an Atlanta team that just gave up over 23 to Jacoby Brissett. I think Mariota's in line for maybe slightly over 20 DraftKings points in this matchup at Atlanta in that dome. Um, I think Atlanta's going to score okay against Tennessee, and Mariota's going to have to throw the ball against them. I think Mariota's a fine option as well. Outside of that, I mean, maybe Kyler Murray uh, is a solid option. He's up to 6000 at that price tag. I would rather just go Russell Wilson, so I'm not even going to get into that too much. I would rather Russell for sure. Um, outside of that, yeah, let's move on to running back. We've talked about everybody I'm really interested in there. All right, now, at running back, I mean... The guy that's an obvious guy that we love, Christian McCaffrey, obviously, we talked about in the first look. This dude is by far the best option on this entire slate. I mean, Dalvin Cook's going against a very tough Chicago defense. I can understand going Dalvin in GPPs. He's going to be low owned because of that defense he's going against. Chicago's been very, very solid versus the run. So I think he comes a little bit more down uh, to reality, but he's an amazing uh, running back. This is just a very tough situation for him. And McCaffrey, 500 more. I'd much rather him against Houston. Um, McCaffrey is going to be in a lot of my lineups or a lot of lineups that I build coming up until Sunday. Um, absolutely love McCaffrey. All right. But Austin Eckler is the guy that's garnering a ton of attention. Melvin Gordon will be back. Um, he, as you can see on the screen right now, he plans to report to the Chargers on Thursday. He will not play against the Dolphins, but he's expected to come back uh, for week five as normal. So this is Eckler's last start. He could come out and really want to ball out here on his last start or, you know, I, I see him having a great game regardless. Regardless of the best thing about Eckler is regardless of game script. Okay, if this game does happen to stay close, Eckler's going to get plenty in the pass game. If, if uh, the Chargers blow him out, he's going to get plenty of run in the, that. What bothers me a little bit is if the Chargers do get ahead huge, the guy who's really interesting to me is Justin Jackson. Now, he was limited in practice Thursday, so keep an eye on that. He did practice fully on Wednesday, though, so he should be okay. We'll have to keep an eye on that, obviously. But if Justin Jackson is playing in this game here, if the Chargers do get a big lead, Justin Jackson is a very sneaky option at 4-1. He's been running the ball very, very well. All right, he's been, I mean, look at that. He's been having very solid games. On limited touches, he's been doing a lot with it. So in a game where if they do happen to smack Miami in the mouth, then Justin Jackson is a very sneaky option. Everybody's going to be all over Eckler. If Jackson ends up having a huge breakout game out of nowhere here because they know Melvin's coming back, they want to see their young guy as much as possible, I could see a scenario where Jackson has a huge game at 4-1. So in GPPs, he's an awesome option. All right. Another guy that I want to talk about is Marlon Mack going against Oakland. Marlon's in a a solid situation here against an Oakland defense that just gave up over 27 to Dalvin Cook last week. Um, The only issue here a little bit is, I mean, the first two weeks, 25 carries, 20 carries, and then it dropped down to 16. He was dealing with a little bit of some type of issue injury-wise. He's not on the injury report, but uh, he's definitely in a good spot here against Oakland. So Marlon Mack is definitely in play at 6-1. Um, another guy that I want to talk about is Carrion Johnson against this KC defense. He's been, he just, last week he got 20 carries. That's a very good sight. Finally got in the end zone. He hasn't done much with his opportunities so far. Mark Ingram just smashed KC for over 38 DraftKings points. Um, this is a, a situation where in GPP, Carrion could end up having a solid game. Um, another guy that I like on the other side of that game, um, on the other side of that Arizona game, is David Johnson going against Seattle. This is a solid matchup here because a running back kind of like David Johnson, a good pass catching back, Alvin Kamara just dropped 30 over 37 DraftKings points against the Seattle defense and now David Johnson gets his turn at 6-8. He's definitely a solid option as well if you want to spend down. Another guy that I'm interested in is Derrick Henry. Going against my Atlanta Falcons defense, Henry has been absolutely balling this season. Um, He's in limited touches. He's been doing a lot with it. Um, He's going going against the Atlanta team that gave up over 29 to Dalvin Cook week one, almost 17 to Marlon Mack. Henry could end up having a solid game here. Um, I'm not super on him at 6'3", but he's a decent option. Um, Obviously, 
Wayne Gallman is a guy that I'm going to have in probably all of my cash game lineups. This dude obviously is going to get a ton of snaps with Saquon Barkley out. He's going to be on the field a ton here. He hasn't normally done a ton with his opportunity, but at the end of the day, a guy who's only 4'6", who's going to be on the field a ton in this matchup against Miami. Oh, sorry, not against um, against Washington. Sorry, I got confused with Justin Jackson. Against Washington, um, it's a solid uh, situation for Wayne Gallman. Obviously, I don't really need to explain that too much. Um, outside of that, obviously, I talked about Mark Ingram. He's been an absolute beast this season. He's in play at 6'6". Chris Thompson, solid for PPR formats. And Leonard Fournette is another guy that I'm uh, interested in on this slate. All right, let's talk about wide receivers. Now, at wide receiver, the chalky guy of the weekend is going to be Terry McLaurin, and I completely understand why. He was a limited participant, as you can see on the screen, in Thursday's practice. Um, hamstring injuries can be some lingering issue type of injuries. Obviously, if he misses, man... There's going to be some ridiculous value, and we'll get to those guys that I do like in this Washington, these, uh, these Washington receivers. Um, it looks like he should play Sunday, but keep an eye on that, okay? If McLaurin does miss, if he plays, McLaurin's going to be an amazing option at 4-5, okay? If McLaurin misses, the guys that you need to be paying attention to is Paul Richardson, all right? Paul Richardson Against this Giants secondary, any Washington receivers are going to be playable against this Giants secondary. Paul Richardson has gotten over seven targets in two of the three games so far this year. He also has two home runs in three games this year. I mean home runs. Two touchdowns in three weekends, uh, three weeks. What is wrong with me? Paul Richardson is an amazing option at 3-7. Another guy that you want to keep an eye on as well if he misses is Trey Quinn. Trey Quinn's another guy who will benefit big time if McLaurin misses. So keep an eye on him. He's only bare min 3,000. He will be amazing value if McLaurin misses. This dude has gotten damn near seven targets every single week so far this year, including a touchdown so far. So he's been getting targeted, and without McLaurin, those, those passes have to go somewhere. So I love the idea of pairing up Keenum with any of these guys. McLaurin, Richardson, Trey Quinn, they're all decent uh salary saver type of options obviously Keenum with McLaurin is the main way you want to go but like I said if McLaurin misses pairing Keenum up with with one of the two Paul Richardson I prefer Richardson over Quinn but you can go with either one all right all right now let's talk about some more obviously now this is no surprise I love Keenan Allen this week against Miami regardless if the Chargers get up big it's because Keenan Allen has done ridiculous damage against them at 7-6 going against the Miami secondary that is bad he's going against Chris Lemons that's the corner he's going to be going against uh the dude gave up over 26 DraftKings points to Amari Cooper last week um, I definitely like Keenan Allen. I think he's going to have a very solid weekend. So I, I absolutely love Keenan Allen. No need to even sit there too long. Another guy that I'm interested in here is Cooper Cup at home in Los Angeles going against MJ Stewart, the cornerback. Um, he's, Cooper's just been absolutely amazing. 10 targets, 9 targets, 12 targets. That's the targets that he's gotten week one, week two, and week three. He's getting very consistent looks in this offense. He catches majority of the targets that are thrown his way. He's got two touchdowns in the in last week. He got two of the uh, two touchdowns out of the entire season. Those are his only touchdowns of the season, but he got two in one game. He's got over 100 yards in two games out of the three games this season. And now he's going against Tampa Bay. Uh, it's just an amazing matchup for Cooper Cup. All right, I talked about liking Russell Wilson. Well, who do I like with him? Tyler Lockett and Will Disley. All right, I'll talk about Will when we get to the tight end area. But Tyler Lockett with Russell Wilson. Absolutely love my boy Lockett here in this one. Um, Tremaine Brock has been doing an okay job against uh, one receivers so far this year. Holding Galladay to 14 Brown to 16 and Moore to 13. Um, they all got over 10 DraftKings points though, and Lockett is better than all of them. So I definitely think Lockett's going to have a very solid game here. Love pairing him up with Russell Wilson. All right. Another guy that I absolutely love on this slate, Kenny 
Galladay against Charvarius Ward, the corner he's going to be facing uh, this Sunday. I absolutely love Galladay here in a game where, especially if you're going Stafford to pair Galladay up with him, absolutely love it. Detroit's going to fall behind at home in their dome. They're going to have to throw a ton, try to catch up to KC. And it's a great situation for Kenny Galladay. So love that boy. Another guy that I'm really interested in is Sterling Shepard. This should be no surprise. We do not have Saquon Barkley for that Giants offense. And Sterling Shepard got funneled a ton of targets last week because of it. Well, nine targets. He got a touchdown 100 yards against Tampa Bay. Love this matchup against Washington, who gave up over 22 DraftKings points to Alshon Jeffrey week one. Sterling Shepard's in a solid uh, situation here at 5'8". Anybody else I want to talk about real quick? Keep in mind that Julio Jones is going to be matched up against Malcolm Butler, one of the best cornerbacks in the entire league. He has done an amazing job so far this year against Odell Beckham, Ty Hilton. Um, Julio is still going to get his on a limited basis, but definitely consider like Sanu and Ridley. They could possibly break out here in this matchup. Um, against a defense whose number one corner, Malcolm Butler, is going to be focused on Julio. That's going to open up some for those other guys. Austin Hooper could even be a sneaky play in GPP as well. Brandon Cooks. Let me find him on the screen. Brandon Cooks had a big game last week. Um, Went crazy. 12 targets, 8 catches for 112 yards. Had a great game last week. I think he could also have another good one uh, here against Tampa Bay. He is going to be much less owned than Cooper Cup. So in GPPs, I definitely like Brandon Cooks. We know the big playability of Cooks. He can blow these defenses out of the water at any moment. So a big play, the big play potential from him is great. Um, let's talk about a few more guys that we're interested in. Larry Fitzgerald against Seattle. The dude's just been super, super consistent. 28 week one, 18 week two. 14 week three he's been super super consistent now he's going against jamar taylor the cornerback for seattle they have been giving up over 13 DraftKings points every single week this year and that's about where fitzgerald's floor is in this matchup i think fitzgerald's going to get 15 to 20 DraftKings points and he's a very solid option at five six to pivot off some of those chalkier options around that price range like galladay shepherd those type of guys. I think Fitzgerald is a solid option. All right, let's move on to tight end. Sorry if I missed anybody that you're interested in. i um, trying to get everything done here. All right, so the tight end that I talked about just a minute ago, and I'm probably going to use a lot of, Will Disley at 3-6. I love pairing him with Russell Wilson, to be honest with you. Wilson's a super safe option this week against this Arizona D. Pairing him up with him is a great situation. Arizona has struggled against tight ends for years. All right, they gave up over 28 to Andrews week two, over 25 to Olsen week three. They have been getting lit up. And Will Disley, 22 and 18 the last two weeks. All right, he's been going off. He's been getting those targets, five targets, seven targets. But the best part, he has three touchdowns in the three games this season. So he's been doing a very good job in the end zone, especially in the red zone. Russell's been looking for him. Will Disley at 3-6 is a very good salary saver as well as tj hawkinson is a guy that i'm also interested in in gpps um absolutely love him because as we know man detroit's going to be playing catch up i think he could be a sneaky option as well um when it comes to the spend up side of things at tight end evan ingram obviously against washington with no uh saquon barkley there's a lot of you know a lot of goodness to be spread around that offense he got eight targets last week for 113 reception yards with for the first start of Daniel Jones career and a touchdown so going against Washington it's a good matchup where they gave up over 12 to Witten old Witten but Witten did lose some weight he seems a little quicker so let's give him props for that Evan Ingram should have a big uh, big weekend though and another guy that I'm interested in is Darren Waller against uh, the Colts. The Colts are another team that have leaked points to tight ends for the last few years. They gave up over 10 to Hunter Henry week one, 24 last week to Austin Hooper. Waller is much more athletic than Hooper. Waller got 14 targets, 13 receptions for 134 reception yards against Minnesota of all defenses last week. He could have a huge game here now that... Uh, you know, now that our boy Derek Carr has some faith in him, I think he's really going to be relying on him a lot when he's when he's pressured in that pocket. So expect Darren Waller to get a ton of targets once again. 
Um, outside of that, those are mainly the, the guys that I'm interested in. There's about four or five tight ends that I've really been having any interest in this week. All right, now let's talk about defenses. Chargers are at the top of the list at 3-8 going against Miami. Like I said, I can see a situation. I can see a scenario where the Chargers destroy this Miami offense. They have a great day in Miami. I also see a scenario where with the game being in Miami, they Miami happens to be able to put some points up on the board. And maybe you would have wished that you saved down to like a Rams defense against Tampa Bay. We know Winston likes to throw turnovers, throws picks in the bunches. All right, another team that we're, that we obviously have some interest in is the Baltimore Ravens against turnover prone Baker Mayfield. I think that Cleveland could score sure, but this Ravens defense is really really good. Do not sleep on the fact that this Ravens defense is just amazing and they're at home in Baltimore going against turnover prone Baker Mayfield. I know we had high hopes for Cleveland, but this is a tough matchup to get it right here. All right. Um outside of that, I haven't been focused on any many other defenses, to be completely honest with you. It's been the Rams, Chargers, or Ravens. Those are the main three defenses that I'm interested in this week. And that's it, guys. Hopefully, I was able to answer everything you need. Hopefully, that final look was good for you. Drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, man. Good luck, everybody. Um, so, final thought. Um, I'm very interested in figuring out a way to get Russell Wilson this week. I think he has huge potential obviously the chalkier option is going to be Daniel Jones and then Case Keenum is also a decent option down there too those are the main three quarterbacks I'm interested in in GPP I love Matthew Stafford just like that I think pairing up for McCaffrey makes sense this week obviously you want to pick the right Chargers don't sleep on Justin Jackson and GPP if the Chargers do get up big pairing up Jackson with that Chargers D is a solid GPP version to go with because obviously if that Chargers defense is doing amazing then Jackson's probably going to be getting a ton of touches as well all right thank you guys for joining me man drop a like subscribe to the channel and let's get this money week four man greenlightdfs.com I'm out